everybody, it's Martin Keenan here from the um, IPS conference and I've managed to grab Dr Holly Sline from Northampton General Hospital. Now Holly last year had an abstract accepted, an oral abstract on reducing healthcare association pneumonia which then reduced hospital acquired clostridium difficile infection or clostridioides as we call it now and unfortunately she wasn't able to do it and I was gutted at the time because I really wanted to listen to it but anyway Holly's here this year although she's not talking about this but I thought let's have a chat so can you tell me about the, the piece of work and you know how it went yeah absolutely hi um we set about often listening to you actually probably in Manchester in about 2017 um where you said if you want to protect your patients from C. diff you need to look at those precursor infections and stop them getting hospital acquired pneumonia and needing those antibiotics in the first place. And then we stumbled across the Health Education in England Mouth Care Matters guidance um, and we thought, yeah, we could do this. We could really set about to make Mouth Care Matter for our patients. Um, we did a baseline audit um, and I was shocked. I think only about 30% of patients had any form of mouth care documented um, had mouth care being given and the equipment on the wards to give good mouth care was severely lacking. People had to look in four different places to find the toothbrush, the toothpaste, the, the denture pot. It was just so disjointed. And you All think, of which are normally kept in the sluice, which I <laughs> yeah. personally wouldn't think is a great place to, to keep my mouth care equipment. No. But, yeah. And a real C. diff link. <laughs> yes, wow, well, yeah. yeah. So we set about to, to improve practice, really. We um, developed the policy, developed a mouth care care plan and colour coded it really. So we had green for basic mouth care, amber for enhanced or dry mouth care, and red for four hourly super, super mouth care. Um, and we put buckets, red, amber, and green buckets in the storerooms, not the sluices, and <laughs> put the right products that staff needed in each of the, the buckets essentially. And it just made it really easy, it was all in one place. Lots and lots of training the competencies for the ward and bringing mouth care to the forefront of people's minds. So I think it was a bit of a forgotten nursing skill um, for nurses on our wards and healthcare assistants. Do you think people think it's important, you know, because they, they clean their teeth at home but they don't clean their toe thinking uh, this is going to prevent me getting pneumonia, it's because it doesn't feel very nice. Yeah. And so do you think that's why people don't think it doesn't matter because they don't understand why? I think that link is, is really poorly understood, it's overlooked isn't it I think. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so we set about to really, and your the bacteria in your mouth changes through that those first few days of admission, doesn't it? As well, it does. I think it's something that's really yeah. important. Yeah. Um, and those pathogens become uh, start to be there that weren't before when you're you're fit and you're well and you're healthy and you're not in hospital. Okay. So you use your behavioural science to, to actually make it easy to do the right thing. Yeah. And your human factors approach. Yeah. So what did you do? Re-audit and then look at the impact of that? Yeah. Etc. Re-audited. And we also, have, through the electronic prescription charts, we, audit, we measured our tazacin, our um, piptaz, our piptacillin, tazabactum. Yeah. Uh, other, other names are available, I'm sure. Yes. <laughs> other <laughs> antibiotics. Are also <laughs> or maybe for not much longer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we audited the tazacin use for patients, for HAP, specifically for HAP, um, before and after, and we saw a 44% reduction of our tazacin for HAP use on our stroke wards and a 17% across all our adult wards. Okay, so you use that as a proxy for reducing yeah. pneumonias yeah. rather than trying to go out and do surveillance, because it's pretty yeah. tricky doing surveillance yeah. for pneumonia. And the, it's so subjective, we talked to five different consultants and they all gave us a different definition, classification for how they would um, cool. diagnose HAP. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so, so, it, this, so this trying to get hard. an agreement on that would have been difficult, yeah. but it's easier yeah. to just go for the antibiotic that they would treat it with. Yeah. Okay, that was a good plan, I think. Okay, so you've um, got significant reduction in antibiotic use. Yeah. Um, Re-auditing practice um, and compliance and documentation to the care plan um, improved to 90%. And we looked at our C. diff rates as well, which was our key driver for implementing good mouth care. Um, and before, the 12 months before we implemented um, improved mouth care, five patients had had a health, a health a HAP associated C. diff, and the following year, one patient. So it sounds big, an 80% reduction, but 
Yeah, I mean, a small, small numbers, sample size. But, yeah, absolutely. But an indication that reducing antibiotics yeah. does really reduce massive. healthcare associated C. diff. Yeah. Okay. And I mean, d did that message get through to people that actually they are seeing, uh, for a start, they're not having to turn up to do root cause analysis, which is, yeah. which is welcome. <laughs> Okay. It really gained momentum. We spread, we um, shared it across our system, um, and we shared it. We had, we were really lucky. We had quite a lot of people in the East Midlands that were also big advocates of mouth care, um, and we had a regional mouth care matters steering group, and so we shared our work there um, and shared it with some symposiums as well. So really spreading the word. Really happy to share the care plans and the. The work that okay. we've done to save people reinventing the whole wheel. Oh, if you don't mind sharing it, I'd, I, yeah. I can put it there for people to download. Yeah. If it, just for people, because we have people from around the world who listen to this, um, Mouth Care Matters, what actually is that programme? Mouth Care Matters is a brilliant, really easy to read, um, evidence-based guidance from Health Education England, the HEE, um, that just talks through the links of mouth of um, infections and other diseases that are all linked to mouth care, things like cardiovascular disease, all sorts of other things that the evidence base is now really acutely aware that mouth care and good mouth care protects patients from so many different things. But obviously, we are particularly interested in the infection mm. element, um, and it goes through best practice for all those elements of mouth care, whether it's tooth brushing, cleaning dentures, helping patients with dementia to brush their teeth effectively changing from an adult NHS supply chain toothbrush to a paediatric toothbrush can be so much better for cleaning patients' teeth. It's got all sorts of tips. And, okay, um, what is that? Is it softer or is it... Yeah, oh, softer, okay. smaller. More pleasant, yeah, because yeah. I know Diane Baker in America did a very nice piece of work and I spoke to her about it, where they were using terrible toothbrushes so the staff wouldn't use them because the bristles would drop out yeah. in the mouth. Yeah. So just by investing a relatively small amount in a better quality toothbrush... You know, your procurement, okay, I have to swallow, okay, we're going to have to spend a little bit more money on that, because presumably the paediatric toothbrushes will be a bit a more expensive. More. A penny more. Okay. On supply chain. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, and you've saved more than that. Have you yeah. actually costed what the savings might have been, do you think, at all? Because um, the antibiotics are low, but the actual you know, extended length of stay, we know that happens, and then the C. diff cases as well. We did, because you caught me on the hoof. I don't know if I can remember those figures off the top of my head, but I can send them over and we could put them on there. Okay. I think it was about 25,000 a quarter from the Tazerson. Just on antibiotics. Yeah, and that's not taken into account the antibiotics you would have had to treat a C. diff with. Yeah, on top of that. So, yeah, yeah. extremely cost effective, really, for the price of the programme yeah. and everything. Yeah. But well received by staff, and. They loved it. And then COVID came along. Any idea what's happened since? COVID came along. Those masks came along, didn't they? Which, while we all needed for COVID, I think has impacted on our, our mouth care. Um, and staff being more wary, I think, to go near a patient's mouth during pandemic times. And, oh, that's an interesting point. I'd forgotten that aspect. Yes, they might be reluctant to get close because, I mean, even talking and breathing produces yeah. aerosols. So. Yeah. Suddenly everything oh, was two point. metres, two metres, wasn't it? And so good just point. reassuring the same message that... We've got our PP on, we're fine to give mouth, you know, keep reassuring the same mouth care message. Yeah. Now that we're coming out of pandemic, we've got a big refocus on it in December. Okay. Um, so have you, do you know if your Tazerson use has gone back up again, your C. diffs have gone up again? Well, unfortunately, we've um, we've lost our electronic um, prescribing as well ah. during COVID, so we've got a year of paper drug charts, which okay. makes it much harder to collect that data. I suppose pharmacy would be able to tell you how much they, yeah. you know, but in bulk numbers they've yeah. brought through, so yeah. I might give you something. look at that. Okay. Well, I really appreciate you talking space. to me. No, honestly, <laughs> fascinating. And thank you very much for talking to me. But that's a really good point about staff not wanting to go near people's mouths and therefore mouth care went down and possibly haps gone up and C. diff's gone up. I hadn't thought of that. So thank you very much, Holly. You're welcome. And Brett Mitchell's just, just snuck joined. in. I thought I'd just, just sneak in and say hello. Yeah. hello. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for doing our podcast. Yeah, yeah. And joining us yeah. on that. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll just wrap up now, shall I? Okay, yeah. You <laughs> Goodbye, yeah, you're everybody. Up. I'm here at IPS. <laughs> oh, fun. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed. <laughs> Uh, hi everyone, Brett here at the IPS conference again, and Martin and Phil are with me. Hi Brett. G'day Brett, Martin, good to be in sunny Bournemouth. Yeah, very sunny today, actually, mm. because the forecast was rain, 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 but uh, mm. God, it's great to be at a face-to-face -face again, isn't it, properly? Oh, uh, yes. You know, which we were saying earlier, that um, it's been a few years since I've been to a face-to-face -face conference, and today, in particular at this conference, I've heard things that have got my creative juices flowing and you know things I've got planned I go oh, I can slot that into that study oh, I could do that we could do that 
and uh, you forget just how valuable these get together are. Just dogs. discussions, isn't yeah. it? You mm. know, because you can get an online lecture and you mm. get plenty out of that. Mm. But actually, it's standing around chatting, and then you know somebody asks you a question, and you mm. right, actually, yeah, I did think about doing that. So mm. that's, that's mm. So and you did a fair amount of podcast plugging as well. I, I, I have, so, I have. Yeah. So maybe they're listening for the first time on this podcast now. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I mean, I was, I, interestingly, I've, I've been playing with Excel a bit recently, and I started tweaking around. Do I can, can I add up different things? And I, I, I've got a spreadsheet, but I know who's on what talk. And you know who our most popular podcaster is? Who has the most average number of views? Tell us. It's you. Me? Yes. yes. It might be because those classic introductions that you do. It must be. <laughs> you, are, you, are, you, are, you get, on the podcast you're on, they get more listeners oh, than I see. either of us. So you a, are our a, most popular podcast. There's a significant though. association. Is that, is I, that, is I'm that not, I could <laughs> even begin to speculate publicly what that might be. But. It's just because he's selective uh, about what he goes on. Yeah, I know. Oh. He only picks the zingers. I yeah. think there's an issue with your spreadsheets, Martin. Uh, is, yeah. what, is, your, is what on your spreadsheet how long it takes you to edit? No. Depending on the uh, uh, well, depending no, on I mean, the, the yeah. podcaster, no, that, that's something we've had to tinker around with over the period. But uh, yeah, we've all like, learned a lot. The, nice. the, the Christmas yeah. tape will be interesting to see who yeah. takes up most uh, space <laughs> on the Christmas tape. I think. <laughs> okay, so, so what's I'm, your highlight? Highlight. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, today I thought so it was very good because uh, every single session went from it, it sort of almost led straight into the other one. So we had Didier, always an excellent speaker, talking about his clean hospitals thing, and I'll get Phil to talk about that in a minute. And that led into uh, that led into Jean Yves' fantastic Tina Bradley mm. uh, lecture on biofilms. And, and we've just had a chat with Jean Yves. So if you haven't listened to that, have a yeah. listen to that one. The classic opening line from him though was, "You know, Tina was loved my French accent, so I've decided to do the talk in a French accent." Yeah. As if what's he going to do a Brummie or a Scouse <laughs> accent? Not, not going to happen. But that was a lovely talk. Uh, and that then led into Jimmy Walker's fantastic talk on water, who's always the very entertaining. And then, then you're and disappointed. Then, and, and, well, then, well, I mean, it has to peak eventually. And uh, but you gave a, a, it, but it all seemed to flow so well. Mm. Uh, I don't know if they planned it completely in that way, but that's the, that's the way it went. But mm. can we talk about the video thing? Because that that's your highlight, I think. So well, far, look, I, I think the highlight is actually just being in a conference and face to face and, and seeing colleagues that we haven't mm. seen for a few years, which is fantastic. But um, no, I was, I was interested in uh, in Didier's more or less launch of the Clean Hospitals campaign. It was the first, certainly the first I've seen of it. And uh, I think it was 20th of October, an annual event, 20th of October. It's um, in a couple of days' time and uh, there's a big session in Geneva. But essentially his idea is to mimic the how the Clean Hands program yeah. um, and how that sort of really um, was rolled out across the universe across the world and um, using the similar similar you know principles with manuals and tools and resources to help uh, people within hospitals on um, on um, implementing the, the clean hospitals campaign um, across across the world mm. so um, I think uh, as far as I know in Australia it hasn't kicked off so certainly yeah. there's some avenues mm. there that um, mm. we might be able to utilize to I mean it took a while for the clean hands program to really get going didn't it? but I mean Johnny put up a nice slide which was 65% compliance with hand hygiene but 32% for actually surface hygiene mm, yes. and actually mm. infection prevention isn't always about one thing so I mm. thought actually that's probably something that doesn't get audited that well because we tend to walk around and go that looks clean mm. but yes. is it? Mm. Didier also mentioned about um, you know this being some of the differences to the hand hygiene um, program was that it seems to be a lot more focus on the need to be flexible um, adapt adapt I mean, we always we always heard DDA talk about adapt to adopt, but um, but yeah, we need to. But there seemed to be more working with working with people because it's not as straightforward as, as in as hand hygiene in the context that there are so many different things, different products, different companies, different cleaning models, different hospitals. It, it's not the same. And different people doing it. Yeah, that's yeah, the thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, everyone needs yeah. to clean their hands, but actually, the cleaners do one bit, the nurses yeah. do another bit, and yeah, it, it is much yeah. more complicated. Yeah. Okay. So that's your highlight so far. I think, well, apart from watching you, Brett, and uh, uh, present uh, every second session, I think. But um, yeah, yeah no. and, and be mentioned in the other ones. Yeah, well, that's right. Yeah, that's right. right. Brett has appeared quite frequently. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, there's going to be a Brett Mitchell conference coming up yeah, shortly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, what's your highlight then? Oh, um, I really enjoyed a couple of things. Yesterday, we heard from Jude Robinson about the DOIP study, which was about defining an optimal infection control service. And um, I really enjoyed listening to that and how that was put together. 
uh, I think that's going to that'll I think there's more to come in that space. So okay. sum it up then briefly. Uh, so in essence, what they're looking to do is work out what's the kind of model that you might need in your, in, your, in a hospital infection control service. Oh, actually, it wasn't just focusing on hospitals, but um, and they started off with the premise of do we look at things like ratios and you know by and large no, and we really need to have some key pro uh, some key features of an infection control service, and then, and they asked people also about what the key priorities were. Um, and um, and and what are the enablers? So I'm just trying to think what those key priorities were. I did tweet about them, um, yeah. but that was yesterday. That was yesterday. Steps, I think it was having the resources to, to to do what you needed to do. That competent stuff, I think, was was another uh, element that they suggested. Um, so yeah. I'll have to look it up again. Yeah, I, did, I did make some notes. I know this is, a, <laughs> but we're going to get Jude on, so yeah. it doesn't matter. We're going to yeah. get Jude on, yeah. and we're yeah. going to talk to her probably about this rather yeah. than my terrible synopsis of yeah. a good program at work. <laughs> uh, so I have to say, it's quite nice I don't actually have to edit out you tapping on a keyboard this time. No, it's just, right. just, just, just me yeah. tapping on the desk yeah. instead. Yeah. 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 And my other highlight was John Eves today. He was really, really good. I really enjoyed hearing about a really long body of program at work and where that's heading. And there's some exciting things yeah. heading yeah. on that. So We're only um, halfway through the program. So far, pretty much. Yeah. 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 I mean, there's go. a lot of very yep. nice abstracts to go this afternoon, yeah. so I'm looking yep. forward to those. But I mean, and my, my favourite so far is actually hearing John Otter talk about qualitative research, mm. which I never would have thought would have happened in my lifetime. But but actually, John really embraced that, and I, I thought his talk on language and how we phrase things was very good, mm. Mm. and how. You know, at the beginning of a research study, they couldn't get anyone to actually take part in just because of the way they were explaining it to patients. There was no what's in it for me. Mm. You know, it's all for the greater good. And the, but mm. you know, who knows what a carbapenemase resistant organism is mm. in those days, mm. a couple of years. So actually, by reframing it, they, they went from five percent agreement to take part in the study to over eighty percent, and that's just mm. on reframing the way they would explain it to people. Yeah. So I thought that was really quite nice, and I, I thoroughly and I did I chat to John about that. Uh, earlier on mm. today so that's okay. another podcast that we'll have coming out after the conference so mm. that, that'll be quite nice and, mm. but it's just chatting to people isn't it you get ideas and and stuff that isn't in the paper that they mm. talked about you know like mm. Holly talked about mouth care and as mouth care deteriorated during COVID because staff don't want to go near a patient's mouth mm. because they're worried about a respiratory virus and mm. what in fact that might have had on pneumonias and other you know, mm. oral hygiene related issues, and I hadn't really thought of that aspect to it, and I'm mm. not sure it's been researched. Mm. But it's it seems logical to me, yeah. and yeah. I, I just you get these ideas, and you think, wow, that's great. Well, mm. The bad news is, at my age, I'll have forgotten them by about mm. eight o'clock tonight, so I will never mm. do anything with them. But it, it's been a good. Aspect. I enjoyed Jimmy Walker's talk too yeah. on water yeah. and it's water, and the risks of water. Yeah, yeah. some fascinating yeah. images, <laughs> things that scare the like, living day. Yeah, pictures are worth yeah. a thousand um, words, aren't they? But, um, yeah. And there's some good suggestions about what the future might need to be like yeah. um, when you're thinking about the risks of water in, in healthcare. I mean, great point about starting to build a hospital. All the pipe works going in now, mm. cap, off, cap off all the pipes mm. so that it doesn't fill up with rubbish so mm. you don't pre-install mm. a load of organisms mm. into your water system a, a year before you even get in there. Mm. Yes. I, bet, I bet that doesn't happen very often. It mm. may do now, but I, mm. I, I, don't, I wouldn't have thought that would have happened in the past. So. Uh, I was going to say, I think the other good talk was um, Nigel... Nigel Edwards. Nigel, yeah, it was really yesterday good. about hospital design, mm. and I really loved his term. I think it was value engineering. Oh, value yeah, engineering. Yeah, no, that's a, which, that's a term that's haunted me over these, because you get heart sick. all know. Yeah, yeah you yeah. know. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. What, what, what was his... What was his <laughs> oh, yeah. He said, it's, it's a misleading term, because there's nothing about value. No, it's no. nothing to do with engineering. No, yeah, that's, that's right. right. Yeah. And his yeah. anecdote was, they decided to value engineer to chop 25 million out of the budget. Yes. They worked on it for six months with the cost of all the redrawing and the cost of everything. It actually cost 26 million to take out 25 million, and they ended up with something that wasn't as good. Whereas if they hadn't done the value engineering, they would have saved money. So that's just. Uh, and sadly, that's it's, life, it's, it's it? something we can relate to. <laughs> oh, though, because yes. when they are looking at cutting costs, it tends to have um, effects, influence on the infection prevention um, of design. So yeah. um, that's something mm. that we've all had to deal with when we've been involved in design and redesign. And I mean, that's the thing about value engineering. No, they're going to take some stuff out 
but it is going to matter to someone. Yeah, that's right. And but that person may not know it's going to matter to them until it happens, and they find that yeah. what they really needed was gone. But the person who's taken it out doesn't mm. under, really understand why it was there in the first place. Because otherwise, why would you design something in that you wouldn't going, weren't going to be needed? That's right. For something. That's right. Yes. And I, I, you yeah. know, so it's all again about communication and being able to explain why something is needed, so that you make mm. sure you don't get something substandard and then have to spend more on picking it up. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Do you know what I am disappointed in? Though? You yeah. haven't picked the real highlight of this conference. I okay. think I know where you're I'm going. Oh, I don't know where he's going. Right. I'm getting yeah. nervous now. Go on. And then I'm not talking about where we might go at the end of the conference, din- you know, before yeah. the conference dinner tonight. Yeah. Uh, I'm talking about me on a zip line last mm. night. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> in the that middle of the night yeah, yeah. <laughs> of Bournemouth Pier. <laughs> That's a great show. Yeah. Great piece of work. I think it was very really well done by the organisers yeah. to think about having a fun night for people who have copped a hiding over the last couple of years. Yeah. Uh, and look, many, I'm not saying you know, many people have, but um, hospital IPC staff and anyone really in IPC have copped a bit of a, a, a battering in terms of workload over the last couple of years. And so it was nice that the conference organisers uh, thought of something different to do. Mm. And, well, it certainly uh, was different, and a new career as one of the flying Mitchells awaits you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we it over our head in the dark. Yeah. And, the, and I had the support of the SIPSI president next to me you to, did. Uh, you did. to yeah. get me. When they opened up the thing and said you have to run off the edge of the 25 metre tower <laughs> uh, with a harness on, I was sort of an oh my god. Anyway, what have I done? I did yeah. <laughs> Hey, that was a good yes. highlight. Yeah, yeah. Fact, yeah. Enough, Professor Russell and I gave, gave that one a miss. Yes, no, we, 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 were enjoyed, supportive we enjoyed watching, didn't we? Yeah, we, we did. Were, we yeah. were catching the chain, uh, change as it was falling out of people's pockets as <laughs> yeah. they flew yeah. over. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, we, we resisted the temptation. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll have more of these podcasts uh, throughout this uh, series of. Well, sorry, throughout this conference, I should say. So yeah. we might have actually had some out by the time you listen to this one. Or there oh, might I, don't be some. I, think, I think this one will go first. This and one's then, and go then first, I'll do so the right. subsequent ones after. Oh, so. There we go. Well, we hope you enjoy the ones that come. We've got quite a few. So um, yeah. hope you enjoy hearing about what's been going on at the IPS conference. Yeah. Ciao. Good to see you guys. Yep. You too. Bye.